Bastian Wallace, I'm the General Manager of Public Affairs at Bicycle New South Wales and I'd like to begin by paying my respects to the Aboriginal Elders of this place, to the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, to their Elders past, present and future and to anybody, any Indigenous people who are watching or are present today. Thank you. Um, so, what this is all about is Bicycle New South Wales is encouraging people to get in touch with their MP and local electoral candidates to let them know what changes need to be made in your local area to make things better for bike riding. By meeting with the people who want to represent you, explaining what you want and making them promise to deliver on what you need if they're elected, you, s you will be able to get real change. You're also helping them and doing them a favour by reaching out. Normally those MPs or candidates have to go to a lot of hard work to engage with people in the local community, so by setting a meeting and volunteering to do that, you're doing them a favour. If an MP or a candidate's too shy to meet with you, there's a strategy for that too. What you need to do is set a meeting with their opponent, take a selfie, post it on social media, tag in the candidate you'd like to meet with, and you'll find that they're a little bit less shy. If one candidate makes a promise to deliver, be sure to talk to their opposing party and make sure that they understand what you expect and get them to make the same promise. And make it easy for them. Bring photos, maps and diagrams of the problems or of how you'd like things to be. If there's a neighbouring electorate that do it better, let them know. And did you know that there's actually a separate budget set aside for the promises that MPs and candidates make during the election season to deliver on what you want. It's a separate budget to the ordinary budget, so you really want those promises. Take selfies, note down the promises, and share them with us so that we can help keep track of the delivery. What we've done is we've pulled together a website, set of, a set of resources on our website, including this presentation, to help you set that meeting up and be able to give you that content that you need to be able to argue your case. So, yeah, there we go. New South Wales actually needs a mode shift to cycling and active transport and that was described in the New South Wales Government Future Trans Transport 2056 document. We need it urgently to beat congestion and Transport New South Wales already acknowledges that that costs 6.1 billion dollars each year in Sydney alone. We know yep, that's the wrong one. There we go. We know that participation in bike riding is falling in New South Wales. Investment in separated cycling infrastructure by councils has led to an increase in rider numbers in the city of Sydney and the city of Parramatta but even those increased numbers haven't been enough to reduce the downward trend in cycling participation across the state. Um, and there we go, New, New South Wales is one of the lowest investors in bike riding. New South Wales has only 15 kilometres of separated cycleways 60 kilometres of bike path, 3,820 kilometres of shared path, so only 4% of that's fully separated, but it has 1,000 kilometres of motorway. 1,000 kilometres of motorway and they didn't put any more than 15 kilometres of separated cycleway. The identified principal bicycle network for Sydney, um, of that only 1% of it is dedicated cycleway and 77% is on the road. It's proposed that bikes be ridden on the road shoulder when they build the new Rankin Park to Jesmond Bypass in Newcastle. Um, there have been no end-to-end -end separated cycleways delivered since the M7 shared path in 2003. And the budget is less than 1% for delivering cycling infrastructure of the whole transport budget. Bicycle New South Wales has called for a billion dollars over four years to be invested, so that's one fortieth of the budget, in order for bike riding to catch up. What we suggest is you can take these slides and you can insert some of the key issues in your area that are a problem. Now, 
we created a policy platform and one of the key policy asks is that we build it for everyone. So in these slides we've got the messages to help you uh, but we would encourage you to use your own pictures. So almost 70% of people when they were surveyed said that they would ride more often but they're too concerned about safety to do so. And we can simply use things like Google Street View. If you don't have images or you can't stop your bicycle to take a picture, you can use Google Street View to show things like a bicycle on the roadway. I wouldn't call that safe infrastructure. So while cycling participation has fallen, serious injuries have risen by 5% over 10 years and fatality rates have remained the same whilst fatalities for other types of vehicle have dropped. If you take pictures like this, then ask your MP or your local candidate whether they would want their child or their grandparent riding on this infrastructure. Now, what this is, is the hierarchy of controls and we've adapted it to bike riding. How that works is you take, uh, you take things like various methods that you're going to use to reduce hazards and you rank them in terms of the desirability of the use of that method because the things up the top are the most effective, the things down the bottom are the least are effective. So off-road bike paths, bicycle boulevards, safe separated bike paths eliminate the hazard and that's the most desirable and most effective thing to do all the way down to personal protective equipment like helmets which are the least effective for eliminating a hazard. So that safety tool is the standard that's used across hazardous workplaces and dangerous environments to reduce safety and risk for people. For bike riding, we should always have as a priority the elimination of hazards by building safe, separated cycleways to maximise bike rider safety for everyone and encourage more cycling mode shift. The current Operation Pedro enforcement emphasises the enforcement of helmet wearing and having a bell. I'm sorry, but when you're hit by a heavy vehicle coming from behind, those aren't a lot of help to reduce the hazard. The current enforcement of minimum passing distance law is poor. Drivers who injure or kill cyclists have few penalties and often no requirement that they demonstrate competence before they get back behind the wheel of a car. RMS and New South Wales Transport emphasise increasing vehicle speed on roads, even on suburban streets, and that undermines the pedestrian safety goals of towards zero. So, we go then to the safe home messaging, which is again part of our policy platform. New South Wales could do more right now to make sure that everybody gets home safely. That includes changing local streets to 30 kilometres an hour where it's demonstrated that far more people would survive if there was an incident. That drivers, when surveyed, have a poor understanding of their responsibilities on the road to people who ride bikes and more education is needed. And the enforcement of minimum passing distance law and other laws that protect bike riders really hasn't been adequate and that needs to change urgently. You need to then take the pictures and the problems in your area, take those videos, drawings and plans and take them into your meetings with MPs and candidates to explain what your local problems are. Then we get to where we're headed as a state. We know that Mode shift to, cycle, to cycling is crucial to accommodate a population of 11.2 million people in New South Wales by 2056. So that's basically a 50% rise in the state's population. The New South Wales road and public transport infrastructure is going to grind to a halt if we don't shift to active transport for the journeys that are 10 kilometres and less. Health costs are our largest budget expenditure as a state at almost 30% of the state budget. And if we don't do anything about it, that's projected to rise to 40%. Our third key policy area is invest now for health. We know that by increasing bike riding and physical activity to 30, by 30 minutes per day per person, that op offers us the opportunity to halve the rates of diseases of inactivity like type 2 diabetes, certain cancers, coronary heart disease uh, and cardiovascular disease. Literally we can drop that to 26% of the population 
becoming ill from those diseases and potentially dying to 13%. We really can't afford to keep watching the rates of diabetes rise. Type 2 diabetes rates in Western Sydney at the moment rise by 1% every single year and 50% of the population of Western Sydney either have diabetes or at high risk. And that story is replicated and can be even worse in certain local area health districts. So what you can do is check out your local area health. They will often have campaigns, publications and experts in your local area who can talk to you about those figures and why it's really important to get people more active more often. So then we get to our wonderful campaign that we will be running. We know that the MPs and their candidates want to hear from you, but engaging with people can be a challenge. Um, we know that tagging them in to engage, even if they can't have a meeting or you can't have a meeting, you're time poor, you can engage with them about the key pieces of infrastructure that you want changed by sharing it and making it really public on social media. What you can do, and we help you, is you find a picture of something that's just not good enough or not safe enough or could be fixed quite easily. Take a picture, send us the picture, and we're going to apply the Fix My Bike Path um, mark across that picture so that you can then share it back. And this will fit into a campaign that we'll be running, and you're going to see that launch in a couple of weeks, the Fix My Bike Path campaign which will be shared across social media and in certain environments across uh, actual city and streetscapes. So get on board, take those pictures, share them on social media, and then it's really important that you maximise your audience. So you want to tag in all the other people who should care about this. That's people like the Heart Foundation, your local council, your local schools in your area. It could be sports clubs where you really wish that people could ride there safely that kids could access them. You, children will know what they want and who they who would want things to be better and they will have some ideas for you as well. You could get, even if kids could draw what their problems were, use a child's drawing, tag that in as well. Those sorts of people are your allies and they amplify your audience and make what you're saying relevant not just to that MP but to a much wider group so the MP or that candidate has a look has a look at how many eyes are on that, and they know that they need to pay attention. Okay, so what have we got in terms of questions? I'm going to face a little bit this way because we've got a few questions maybe. What kind of questions have we got? Sebastian, mm. if I don't know which electorate I'm in and who yes. my local member is, how can I find that and their contact details? So you've got, on our website, we have a link to show you how to find who your local candidate is. So check out the website and we have a full election page with letter templates, instructions on how to find your MP. Some of the local candidates in your community, they're not, if they're not already your MP, they're going to be advertising in your community and hopefully making their presence known. So they'll have poster boards up or letterbox flyers, all of those sorts of things. Yes. We've got our local MP coming to our, our monthly meeting. Excellent. How uh, do you um, suggest that we go about talking about the issues that are in our area because we have quite a large area? Yep. Um, so, and there's a, a lot of um, issues that we need to talk to him about. And I'm assuming he's only going to come for a short period of time. Look, what can help so... Um, I'm aware of who the MP is and that they're quite pro-cycling uh, and what can help MPs and candidates are quite time poor so what you can do to help them is you can prepare in advance and prepare something for them to take away. What really helps is something that's well researched so if you've got um, somebody who agrees with your perspective it could be say the local council or a local football club or if you've got other people that agree you can put that in there. If you've got um, a problem with obesity or inactivity that's really been made public on your, say, local area health, include that information. If you've had an area that's a, an accident black spot where perhaps pedestrians have been injured or killed or people riding bikes have been injured or killed, put that in there, use pictures, 
use plans and show them the ideal circumstance that you'd like. Take a map of the area and draw your bike path on it. We want this because it serves these communities and it does this. And that helps make it clear for the person to then take away. The MP themselves or the candidate themselves might be time poor, but they have a whole lot of staff and volunteers whose job it is to pick their way through all of that and you put your contact details on it because they may well want to pick up the phone. What's this thing? And a key part of what, what I do every day is prepare these sorts of things and people pick up the phone or send an email and say, I'm really interested about this, tell me more. Would you recommend sending him um, questions in advance before the meeting? Questions in advance can be very helpful and particularly if you were going to sort of want them to be able to answer that question immediately, yes, that can be very helpful and it means that if they have, so if they're a sitting MP they have staff to deal with this stuff. If they're a candidate who doesn't know terribly much and their staff are really volunteers just helping them win an election, that's more of a send some pictures and a light touch because they don't really have political staff to make it, unless they're personally really interested in bike riding, they don't have the staff to do that digestion of the resources for you. And I've got, so one of the questions we thought you might have is, if you wanted to send those pictures, you send that to our info at bicyclenewsouthwales.org.au address. So send that through to us and we'll process those for you. Um, and I don't know about, I'm sure Bike East has experienced this and our other bicycle user groups, Sometimes the debate gets negative. Sometimes you will start something on social media and the comments back will be, bike riders are annoying, and it might be fruitier language than that, or bike riders should carry ID, or bike riders don't um, pay red Joe, or they don't pay for the roads. So be aware that Bicycle New South Wales has addressed a lot of these issues in the content and the articles that we put out. So those resources are there for you to have to use to argue back if you have people attacking you on social media or a lot of those things are the things that MPs and candidates are frightened of talking about because they think well more of my voters drive cars than ride bikes so I have to look after them first. So check out our website and if it's an argument about putting a bike path in might be a problem for shops we have content about the benefits of putting a bike path into small business. Uh, and equally with a number of the other issues. So those resources are there for you. Print the article, show them the links, help them share, the, share that. And you can tag that in on social media as well to help deal with those arguments and make your lives a little bit easier. But if you get a curly one, or people are being particularly obnoxious, you can call us again to ask for some help. And our telephone number is 02 9704 zero. Nine seven, oh sorry, 9704 my bad. So you can give us a call and we can give you a hand. Any other questions that people have? Anything online from Nothing people? Nothing coming through online. Not at this point. Any others? Questions, comments, theories, successes? So you mentioned ways to connect to yes. your MP by asking them if they'd be comfortable with their job riding on a piece of infrastructure. Yes. Are there other ways to make the, the requests resonate with them, to personalise it to them, to make them more likely to respond and be favourably disposed? It depends on the person. So if you have an MP who, who you think could ride a bike and would ride a bike, you could take them on some of the pieces of roadway and infrastructure that you're concerned about. Um, they may cry time poverty or they may get interested, I don't know. You can certainly, if you have uh, bike cameras that you can take pictures, you can share those videos. You can uh, ask them, do their children ride bikes and where do they ride and take an interest that way. Um, you can certainly have members, if you have members say of, a, of your family or your organisation who are about the same demographic as the MP, so maybe the same age bracket, same gender, you could um, make sure that that person, you may maybe take some pictures of that person riding and ask the MP if they can imagine themselves in that position. That can help too. Um, and then it's just around their interests. You could ask them, if they have a particular interest that isn't bike riding, you could ask them how they travel there. And you could ask them to say, well, how would you get there by bike? So if they're a local hiker and they love hiking, 
how do you get to the start of your hike? Or if they ride horses, where is your local rail trail? Oh, you mean we have a rail corridor but no trail and you could be riding your horse on it? And you can activate their interest around the things that relate to your local community. You can even activate their interest for the benefits that things that, that bike riding delivers for them even if they're never going to get out of their car. Most of the communities across Australia have some problems around transport or congestion. So they have problems, it might be that your town, when it's time to get the kids to school, just gets so choked up in their intersections they can't move on. And you ask the young people, why aren't the kids walking or riding to school again like they used to? And they're probably going to have some ideas about the road safety issues that would prevent children riding to school at present. You could ask people around, um, in some of our communities we have transport poverty, so we have high rates of unemployment that relate to the fact that there isn't any public transport and people can't get where they need to go. So once there is no school bus anymore, a lot of communities have nothing other than the school bus, once that's finished, how do I get further education? And if I can't get further education, is it even possible to get a job? So there are issues around equity that really speak to a person's constituency that they're going to have to argue in front of people they're going to address, that bikes can solve, that nobody's having a conversation about. So it's really tying that back to your local issues. Um, in terms of, I, mean, I guess, we're from city uh, focused, uh, <coughs> but uh, I guess there's key policies that we, we're, we're focused on that I would like to think could be more broadly mm -hmm. uh, part of a, a united message from the, the, the cycling community. Remains, I suppose, for us, the main mention there's already is the, the inner Sydney regional bike network, and uh, in support of that, uh, obviously, the better uh, plan, development of the uh, and implementation of the local bike, net, bike, bike routes through bike, local bike plans. Uh, and then, as, as a, I think this is a policy that Bicycle New South Wales has endorsed, which is safe street neighbourhoods which is about getting people out the door safely to connect to the local routes and the regional network. And that, we see that as the, you know, the whole picture in terms of a safer environment and infra infrastructure for cycling. Um, is, is it is possible New South Wales trying to best get the common messages out for people coming up to the election like that? And, and that's what Build It For Everybody's about. So. Build it for everyone. A lot of communities across New South Wales have a bike plan, even if you don't know about it. There was a special amount of transport funding that was made available to communities for 50% of their bike plan to be paid for by the state government, and councils jumped on board. So most communities either have a bike plan or they're going to get one because the money was there. And if they didn't get on board with that, they were going to miss out on the money. So most have one. That doesn't mean they've built any of it. So you actually can go and have a look. You can ask your council or get on their website. And if they have a bike plan and they've never built any of it, again, that's another thing you can take to your MP and say, this isn't fair. My council's done their bit, they've got a plan, but they don't have enough money to build it. They need money to build it. And you could point to communities that have been successful in getting money. So for example, Wagga got their bike plan funded. It's important that you draw on that success and you say, well, they got it, why can't I? And you try to get some promises out of MPs to do the things that you think should happen first. And building a bike plan costs money, fair enough. You want to get the promise to deliver at least some of that, but lowering speed limits costs almost nothing. And a lot of communities, even in rural and regional New South Wales, have huge problems around you know, the transit of goods and trucks and heavy vehicles going way too fast through areas that are actually people's domestic housing or that not being enforced. So it's important that you relate it back to your community but ask for the things, ask for, oh, go high, ask for the biggest, best and brightest black bike, plan, bike plan you can get but also ask for the little wins as well that make things safe for people right now. Ask for those lower speed streets that make things safe for bike riding. Um, if you've got something that could get a small upgrade to go from being just a footpath to a shared path, if you've got 
a disused rail corridor that could become a rail trail, all of those things. Make sure it's on your shopping list and that you ask for it. Got some questions online. For excellent, you. excellent. What have we got online? How Give can one person make a difference? One person can make an extraordinary difference. If you call in, you've got to build your team. So if you're one person in your community and you get your allies together, you know that the council's obliged to deliver for you. You know that MPs say that they're going to deliver for you. So what you then need to do is think now, who else could be on my team? And that's going to be people like your local area health, the Heart Foundation, probably your local schools and childcare centres. Anybody who has an interest in community health, in stopping congestion, in making kids healthier, in reducing obesity, they are all your teammates. So check out online what their social media handles are. Share pictures. Invite them to the meeting if you get one. But, but call in all of those people as you're starting to share the message because those people will help amplify it. They'll share it with their networks and you go from being one person alone to having teamwork and to having other people who are really interested in your message. How about children, elder and disabled people cycling? How to make it an important issue as well? Absolutely. Elders vote, people with disabilities vote, the parents of children vote absolutely important and some of the best cut through is just going up to those facilities so if you're a wheelchair user and you've got a place where there's steps and there should be a ramp go there have a picture taken send it show people the environment that's disabling you if you're older and you're expected to ride beside your local motorway share a picture of that that'll crystallize local energies Nobody's going to think that that's appropriate. It's in our communication strategy, we sort of have a stepped approach. So we call in people to form, form our team. If that's not quite enough to get our message heard, we call out the behavior that we don't want. So we share those messages and we make it really clear what's not okay. And then if that still doesn't work, we take the gloves off and we start throwing shade. And we use our social media and the ways that we communicate to really make it clear that the way things are is not good enough. It's not, for example, it's not legal to behave in certain ways. It's not appropriate that people are letting you down. Call those people out and call that behaviour out. Okay, I think that's all the questions online so far. Yep. How do you get an MP to stick to their promise that they've made? You make it to, to so that's a, Edna, that's a fantastic question. Great. So I've been able to, in a previous role, I've been able to successfully make an MP stick to a promise that they were going to weasel out of by making it really public. Delivering on those promises comes from a separate bucket of money. They have to do it. The money's there to do it. Make sure you make those promises public share it, tag us in on social media. We will actually be keeping a list of the promises and keeping track, because sometimes it takes time. It might take six, 12, 18 months to deliver. We will keep track, and if it doesn't matter, if it doesn't happen, then we will be calling up to say, look, this is something that matters to people who ride bikes. It needs to be delivered. What are you gonna do about it? If it still doesn't happen, we start that process of calling in, calling out, and throwing shade. Thank you very much everybody for joining us on the adventure of starting something new. This video will be available on the website as a resource for you to watch any time that helps you and you can always email us and give us a call. Thank you.